Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is about something completely different than we normally talk about. And that is because I love and I'm interested in just about anything that will launch a projectile. Firearms, air guns, archery, trebuchets, catapults, you name it. But today's subject is blowguns. And that's because it is one of the first projectile launching weapons that I got to use regularly and get a whole lot of practice with. My story with blowguns started back in junior high uh, when a friend and I had some time to kill just about every day during the week, um, actually in between classes at school. The school that we went to was a very small um, homeschool group type of school and we had a decent amount of freedom to roam around and do some things when we weren't actively in class. We were both from the country, used to shooting pellet guns, shooting rifles, whatever, but we were stuck in town all day long and wanted to shoot something of some sort. We started out as maybe a lot of uh, teenagers do with a drinking straw and spitballs and things evolved from there seeing oh this launches at quite a good speed out of here maybe we could put something sharp in there and get it to stick and it went from drinking straws to big pen tubes and from big pen tubes to what we eventually came across was a really good solution um, electrical conduit I've got a piece of that here and this is a five foot section what we came across originally was a ten foot section and while that does work, um, it's not ideal for reasons we'll talk about later. I'm going to set this aside for just a second. You can buy blowguns in a variety of shapes and sizes, but we were in junior high at the time. We had virtually no expendable money. Frankly, buying something and just shooting it wasn't quite what we were up to at the time. We were making things ourselves and uh, exploding them or shooting them at things, and that's what we spent a lot of our time doing. So anyway, my friend and I got very proficient with blowguns during that time, and I have had a lot of fun with them since. The last couple of years have been mostly taken up by firearms, but I am slowly starting to get back into uh, air guns and blowguns specifically. So today's video is just about how to make a simple blowgun and to get started shooting it. Like I said earlier, I have a five foot piece of electrical conduit and this is going to be the basis of our blowgun. This whole project is super inexpensive. I spent for, for everything um, we're going to need to make the blowgun, I spent three dollars because all you need is this tube and I like to have something to wrap my hand around when I get a seal and go to actually use it to launch a projectile. What I like to use for that is this right here and you can find just about any fitting at the store that'll work but it'll just slip right on there and I'm actually going to buffer this with tape a little bit and I'll show you that in a second so that this will just screw on and that just makes a more comfortable place for my hand to sit later on when we go to um, actually shoot the thing. My local Lowe's and just about any Lowe's I've ever been in in the electrical section will have these sections of conduit for a, just over two dollars and I think this was 28 cents. I am going to paint this However, you certainly don't have to. You don't even have to put uh, a mouthpiece of any sort. You can just shoot with this alone. And I already have, uh, pretty much as soon as I bought this. Commercial blowguns, like this one here, um, can be really nice and they can be effective and a whole lot of fun. But they can also be a little bit expensive, especially for what they are, just a, pretty much a tube. This blowgun, uh, and it's a rather nice one, um, it's an Extreme Blowgun is the brand of it, is a 50 caliber, and that is kind of unusual. There's only a few commercially available 50 calibers. Most of what you're gonna find are 40 caliber ones, and really the only difference between the two, as far as the darts go, is just the size of the cone. 
The main benefit of a commercial blowgun like this is it has a very smooth inner bore and it's very lightweight. This tube is uh, thick walled aluminum and it's really nice and smooth on the inside and also uh, coated, I believe, and it's not going to have any problems with rust or corrosion. This is the only commercial example that I have available to show you, um, but I have had other ones in the past and I probably will have uh, different ones in the future, including the uh, Tim Wells Slockmaster, which I'm a huge fan of Tim Wells. If you guys want to see some good blowgun hunting videos, just go to his YouTube channel and check it out. Anyway, I've rambled on enough for right now. Some things you're going to need for the blowgun itself. Um, a section of half inch EMT conduit. And I do not know why they call this a half an inch because you won't be able to measure a half inch on any dimension. It is actually uh, 5 eighths of an inch in internal diameter or 0.625. You can use any length you want to start out. Um, I would recommend either four or five feet to start out with. You can go longer. I've had great luck with six feet, uh, but four or five feet is a great place to start. One thing you want to check, um, and you want to check this at the store while you're buying it, is that your piece of conduit is straight. So put it up to your eye, look at an object, and kind of spin it and make sure it's straight. Because remember, this stuff is bendable and it's not always straight in the rack. So you want to kind of sort through and get the straightest one you can find, and that's going to be really important later on. The other thing that you need, and actually you don't even need it, but it's kind of handy, um, is a PVC fitting of some sort, or just any sort of pipe fitting that you can make a mouthpiece out of. It doesn't have to fit. In fact, this one doesn't really fit on there, but we're going to wrap some tape around here and just thread this on. And um, this, I believe, was about 28 cents. This is about $2.30, if I remember. So we're under $3 uh, for the whole blowgun so far. The other thing that you can use, and this is just a piece of um, PVC conduit that I've had laying around, um, you can use half inch Schedule 40 PVC. The trouble with this is it is it is a lot more flexible and it's not going to stay as straight for you. Um, that's really the main problem. Also, it's a little more chunky in this diameter. The one nice thing about the PVC conduit is it has a little bit smoother of a bore to it and it's not so cold when you go to grab it um, in cool weather, but it does droop a whole lot. So even in this short five foot section, there's no way I can hold it so that it looks straight all the way down. Um, it's just it's just got a droop. This is great for if you're doing uh, blow guns of like three feet and shorter. It can be great for that. Uh, nice and lightweight, and you might be able to find fittings that fit on it just a little bit nicer. In fact, this one goes right on. With that said, my preferred hardware store tubing is the half inch EMT conduit uh, because it is a little more rigid. It's gonna hold its shape unless you really whack it against something. And it actually feels a little bit more substantial in your hand, which I kind of like for some weird reason. Uh, I'm gonna give this a quick coat of spray paint and then we will attach a mouthpiece and start making some darts. All right. So I've got a coat of paint on this and I painted it this nice flat orange or satin orange, I guess. Here's the paint can. And this is just one that I had laying around. It leaves a nice coat and I kind of like the color. So now all I'm going to do to attach this uh, mouthpiece of sorts is take some regular old electrical tape and just make a couple wraps around. Let's go like one and a half wraps around and try that. Uh, that might be the ticket right there. Yep, 
Yeah, that works out for us nicely. Not too loose, not gonna slide off. And if I wanted to, I could paint this a different color too, maybe black, but I'm just gonna leave it gray just the way it is. Okay, so now we have our blowgun together and you didn't really have to do any of this. Um, this is just all optional, of course, but uh, makes it look kind of decent and gives something for your hand to grab around. Now, we're not gonna worry too much about the seal your mouth gets on here. Some mouthpieces you can see are shaped like a funnel. In fact, let me show you one. Here's a mouthpiece from one of my commercial blowguns, and you can see it is kind of shaped like a funnel and your lips kind of go inside. We're not looking for that uh, really at all on this one. We're actually gonna create the seal by our hand going around here and then your lips are gonna go on your actual hand and make the seal that way. It may not make sense right away, um, but it will once you see me shooting it. One of the most fun parts of this whole process is making darts. And here are a bunch of darts that I dug out that I probably made uh, between eight and 10 years ago. And I just have a box that I've had all my blowgun stuff in for a long time. If you don't want to buy darts, uh, cold steel darts, either the mini broadheads or the razor broadheads or the target darts or whatever you want to use are a really good option for this diameter blowgun, the 625. Um, their cones can be just a little bit snug in the rougher conduit barrels. So you can just take a little bit of sandpaper and spin these and run them along and you can get your fit dialed in just perfectly. These probably won't work as well for um, your PVC tubes. In fact, let me see here. No, it's just a little too tight to go into that PVC tube. So let me just quickly talk about the different designs of darts that I've had over the years and uh, what's worked best for me. So um, we'll start over here on this end. This is just a simple spike dart made with a heavy piece of steel music wire um, and then I've got a paper cone on it. You can see these paper cones do not hold up well. I've, I experimented with them, uh, with coating these whole cones with super glue and letting them dry and that makes them last longer, but they still um, aren't gonna last as long as the last method we'll talk about, which is the duct tape cones. Um, I've done other shapes of cones, and this is a completely different type of dart. This one is actually a barbed dart with a razor blade on the head that I used for frogs, and it actually worked pretty well. But this has got like um, a report cover that's twisted into the shape of a cone and then super glued onto a dowel shaft. Um, Heavy music wire, again, this is a little a little lighter size wire than the shorter dart, um, but this works well for a shaft. Again, paper cone, not very durable, not very accurate, and uh, yeah, it doesn't work as well. What else do I have here? Oh, um, milk cones made out of milk jugs. This was one of my more successful um, types, but again, they get weak and kind of bend. These uh, cones you actually make by melting a milk jug and then pressing a form into it and then cutting out that shape. Um, and they can work really well if you do it properly, but I usually tended uh, to be impatient and get them to be really thin. Here's one that worked better. You can see that's pretty firm. Getting these trimmed consistently and not all wobbly like that takes more patience than I had as a teenager. We may try this method again. You will see doing this that just about anything you can think of can be used for a blowgun dart. Some of my favorites are the thin gauge music wire or kind of sp springier steel that doesn't deform very easily, um, bamboo skewers, and thin dowels seems to be about the best. Now let me talk about this dart for a second because this is one of the best designs I ever came up with. I've got about a seven inch uh, piece of dowel here with my duct tape cone that I will show y'all how to make after a while. And then a an aluminum tip made out of a piece of uh, aluminum tubing for a collar and then a solid aluminum insert in the end. Let me see if I can get that to focus well for you because it's kind of a cool tip. 
and then I ground that uh, end down to make it like an arrow tip, like a field point, and this is one of my most accurate dart designs ever, and it works very, very well, and is uh, really durable too. I've shot these all kinds, and I made a set of five at the beginning, and I only have four left, but all four of these still fly very accurately and are a ton of fun to shoot. I was looking in my supplies box, just digging through, pulling out all these sorts of darts, and I actually found a little bit of stock I have left over from making those tips. I have got some of the solid aluminum and then the aluminum tubing necessary to do this, and this will probably make four or five more um, of these types of darts, so we may be doing that in the future as well. This is 730 seconds round aluminum. Um, I picked this stuff up from a hobby shop, and you kind of got to play with this fit. This particular size happens to fit perfect. I'm not sure what this um, round aluminum stock is designated as. We'll measure it when we make this video and see. But I picked these up at a hobby shop that had a lot of different sizes of aluminum, brass, and steel uh, stock, both tube type and square and solid and all of that. And if you have a hobby shop in your area, it's going to be well worth looking into buying uh, dart supplies there because you'll very you're very likely to find good music wire like this and strong straight dowel type shafts of a couple of different types of wood and you can experiment with that too. Okay, let me clear this all aside and we're going to work on today making a duct tape cone with a bamboo skewer shaft and trying to get a couple of darts to go out and test and try to get to fly really straight. All right, so here are the items I'm gonna be using today. I've got a pack of skewers from Walmart, and I tried to pick a pack that looked like it had a bunch of decent straight ones in it. Uh, some duct tape, and trust me on this, you wanna grab a bright color. This is like a neon green. Um, if you grab just gray or black or heaven forbid camo, uh, you're gonna lose these in the grass. A bright color helps you find these a whole lot easier if you would happen to miss your target. A uh, Sharpie marker, some super glue, pair of scissors, and hopefully you can find a sharp pair of scissors. Mine are probably not really sharp enough for the task. Then two optional items, but things that I use quite a bit when I'm making these um, is some sort of a form and any inappropriate comments related to my dart form will be immediately deleted. I know it looks kind of silly, but this actually works really well um, for getting the shape of your cone perfect. Then a short section of tubing just as a sizing guide. Uh, I really like to use this PVC one for making darts for the electrical conduit blowgun. I'm going to take a minute, open up this duct tape, and get myself used to making these cones again um, because it has been, as I said before, probably eight to ten years since I made them last and I'm going to be bumbling through this a little bit on the first couple of runs. So I'm going to make a couple of these, come back, and then we'll make a couple together and I will show you how it's done. All right, my assumption was correct. I did have to screw up a bunch of cones before I finally got it right. And I was also correct that my scissors are much duller than I would like for this job, but they will do for now. Let me cut off a strip here. Let me cut two pieces about two inches in length, and I'm going to try to keep the tape stretched evenly so that it doesn't warp. And that's why you really want to use scissors and not uh, just rip it. There we go. All right, so we're going to start out by taking our form, and you can do this freehand just by wrapping the tape into a cone, okay? But I like to use the form because it gets a little more consistent. I'm gonna hold the tape along the form uh, with my thumb here, and I'm gonna try 
to get it wrapped so that it comes almost to a point. Holding back pressure consistently on the upslope of the form so that I get it to stick all the way around without any wrinkles. And then I'll smooth it down. Now obviously we don't want the sticky side um, towards the walls of the blowgun because it wouldn't actually go anywhere. But we also don't want a sticky side on the inside because then it's just going to collect all kinds of crud. And we definitely want two layers so that it will actually have a little bit of structure. So I'll take a second piece of tape here and just stick it on there. And this one's a little easier because you already have a, a, a sticky surface. And we'll wrap that around. You can do this with less tape. And I had figured that out at some point in the past, but I was using uh, half a width of tape for this. And that's how I was getting cones that weren't long enough this way, had too wide of openings this way. Um, so I'll figure that out again. But for now, we've got a cone that's uh, probably an inch across at its uh, widest point where it's surrounded by tape on all sides. You also do want to try to wrap so that you've got an even number of layers around the whole side and it's got similar rigidity on all sides. And we're close to that right now. The next thing you want to do is take your guide and get some ink on the inside lip of it here. Then I like to use the form and press it on there as straight as I can and give it a little bit of a twist. And I'm going to give it a little bit of wobble back and forth. Okay, I'm not actually leaving any... I am leaving a mark on here. I probably need a different, uh, a, a more wet Sharpie. But I can see, maybe I can get the camera to focus and you can see too. See that little indentation on there? That's really enough. I'm going to follow that with the scissors all the way around. So I'll just cut down to the mark here. And then I'll follow it all the way around the outside and I can see it. You probably can't see it on camera. But I'll follow it all the way around to the other side in a little tiny short snips there. And then I'll look at it and I invariably have some high spots. So I'll trim those off. And that's looking decent. Okay, now what I want to do... Oh, let's talk about my, our skewers just for a second. That figure that I threw out earlier about 70% of them being usable. Well, actually, 77% of them were not usable. There were just two... Uh, now, that one's not a very good example. You probably can't see that wobble on camera. Uh, let me find a different one here. There's one. I like them to be straighter than that. Something like that, so that it is pretty flat when I spin it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I like it to be as close as it can be. And at one to two dollars for a hundred pack of these, um, coming out with 23 shafts is what I came out with, uh, for that price is not too bad. Okay, so to finish this out, I'm gonna snip a little bit off the tip of this cone. And that's probably not quite enough. I want it to actually fit through fairly smoothly with only a little bit of resistance. Otherwise, it's gonna stretch the cone in weird ways and eventually make it flex. And we don't really want that. So let me snip a little bit more off. Okay, that's not quite right. And you do want to individually fit each one of these And there's probably some kind of a guide that I could make to make this process quicker, but I haven't 
done that yet because it's not really okay there you can see it just barely slipped over and it's maybe even a little tighter than I'd like you see that wrinkle right there that's from stretching out the hole so I actually want to widen it out just a tad more and on each turn you can see since I squish it it gets that little fish mouth looking thing so I'm just gonna trim off those and that might give me just the uh, just the right amount that's close to perfect okay I'll slide it up to the end of the shaft here and I want to leave you can see that I, I don't want it well there I pulled it all the way through I don't want the cone flush with the end I keep pulling it through <laughs> but I want just a little bit of the bamboo skewer left sticking up in there that's a decent view there uh, to give something for the super glue to hold on to now I want to spin this and try to get the cone as straight on there as I can I'm also going to take my hands and shape it to be as round as I can before I do this because once I drop in the super glue and that dries I'm saying that's pretty close right there once I drop in the super glue it's actually going to settle around that shaft right there and actually lock this angle in so I want it to be as good as I can right now and I've got a little uh, unevenness in the top of this, but what I'm actually watching is the side angle of this. I don't want that varying too much, and it looks like that line is pretty straight when I spin it. It's not got too much flop in it. So I'll take my super glue, and you do want the liquid kind. And I'm going to put two small drops right down in... actually touch it to the end of and I just want just enough glue in there to flow around the end of that skewer and hold things in place okay then I'll take this dart and I'll set it up somewhere where I can keep it straight until that super glue has dried I'm gonna make uh, a couple more of these and then we'll get out and shoot them and see how they work one note about these particular skewers. These seem to be a lot thinner, and maybe I can show you that on camera. They are substantially thinner than these that I used to use, and these were the Walmart ones too. But I guess um, as times have changed, these skewers have gotten a lot thinner, so I may end up having to make these shorter in order to make them fly well. And I'm hoping it's not a deal breaker. But we'll find out when we go to shoot them. All right, our darts have had a chance to set up and I have no idea how these new ones are going to fly. I haven't made darts in a very long time and also this bamboo is a lot different um, in weight and feel than the old darts. So we're just gonna kind of see uh, how these fly and if we're gonna need to do anything different to them. Darts are stabilized in flight by drag, similar to uh, like a Diablo pellet in an air gun. There's no rifling to spin a dart and stabilize it that way. What we've got instead is uh, kind of like fletching on an arrow. This cone is going to create drag and hopefully uh, stabilize things, but we're going to see. I've got the target right over here. Uh, about 10 yards away. 10 yards is a pretty good distance for testing out darts. Um, we may or may not hit the target, but uh, we're going to give it a try and see how these fly. Let's just see what kind of a flight characteristic we can get from these. Okay, that actually flew pretty straight. Um, a little better than I was expecting, actually. I'm going to keep the same aiming technique and uh, hold about the same spot and see if we can get a group. 
That dart I could tell had a little bit better of a seal in the bore and thus hit just a little bit higher. You could also probably hear it in the sound signature. There was a little bit more of a pop when it exited the end of the bore and that was from the duct tape expanding a little bit and snapping out. One thing I should mention, and this is something you should do when making darts, is take your exact bore and test fit your darts like this. You want it to touch on all sides, but not be too tight, and you want it to be able to slide up and down. This dart is actually about perfect. It's, it's firm, um, it'll hold itself in there without falling out, um, but it also is loose enough to slide up and down pretty easily. This one, I bet, is gonna shoot kind of near that second dart, just a little bit higher. On our first set of darts, we've already got a Robin Hood, but we'll go look at that after a bit. I'm shooting consistently to the left today. I'm not sure what that's about. All right, not too good, but uh, the darts actually flew pretty decently. Let's go take a look at our target. All right, so I am way out of practice, but you can see we've got uh, somewhat of a halfway respectable group. We did manage to ruin one cone on a dart by hitting it with another dart. That happens fairly often. Um, I may be able to fix that cone with a piece of duct tape, or we may just trash the dart. This time I'll put the camera just on the target, and I'm going to shoot these five darts again. I haven't fixed that one cone, so we'll see how that affects things, and I'll let you know when I shoot that particular dart. In fact, I'll shoot that one first. Let's see if we can do a little bit better on the grouping. All right, so we've got something just a little bit interesting. Let's talk about it. All right, so here on the target, you can see we've got three group, three darts that hit fairly close to each other and two that hit a little further away from the main group. What I'm gonna try is a little bit of sorting. I'm gonna pull these three darts that made a good group and I'm gonna reshoot them separately from these two and we'll see if we notice any pattern. What I do sometimes do is number the darts too so that I can um, sort them that way and figure out which ones are consistently hitting closer to my point of aim than the others and we can actually sort out the darts um, so that we get a group that are better than all the others similar to projectile sorting in reloading or something like that. All right I'm going to shoot those accurate darts first and see if they repeat their first results. Okay, and they did indeed repeat their first results. I'm not sure why I'm shooting to the left this morning. It's probably because of uh, the, the way the sunlight's hitting the end of the barrel, and we will talk about aiming uh, later on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shoot those other two darts exactly the same and see if they give me a different point of impact. All right, so it could be that my form is improving and I'm shooting a little more accurately. Uh, we got two Robin Hoods on that second group, and so I'm counting the point of impacts of these three darts as the group for all of them, which is about two inches across, and that is a little more representative of uh, decent shooting with a blowgun. Even though my point of impact is almost inexplicably uh, left of center, and I'm normally fairly dead center, Let's set these darts aside, especially now that they've got some holes in them, and let's shoot my aluminum-tipped target darts from before and compare and see if they do any better. Now these darts are slightly heavier, so I expect the point of impact to be slightly lower, um, and I'm only shooting three of them because I've only got three without a hole through the cone. For the same reason as those other ones uh, that I consistently 
tend to Robin Hood with these darts. We'll take a group for the center of the target uh, with my same aiming method, and I'm guessing I am going to be hitting a little bit to the left. Okay, definitely lower. Definitely a slower flying dart. All right, fairly good group there with those three darts. Uh, I could definitely tell there was a significant amount more back pressure because they were quite a bit heavier. And again, about a two to two and a half inch group at 10 yards, which is not bad at all. 38 minutes into the video, there are probably not many people left watching. But if you did, thanks for sticking around. If you enjoy this type of video, if you enjoy blowgun related content, please let me know in the comments. I probably won't do any more videos about blowguns or dart making or anything like that if I don't get some type of feedback that this is stuff you guys actually like. Because I know it is a little bit different than the stuff that most of you came to the channel in the first place for. But I really do enjoy blowguns and blowgun shooting and thought that I would share a little bit of that with you today. Um, if you have any ideas for any cool darts or anything, uh, let me know about them. I'm happy to give just about anything a try and I would love to hear what you guys have tried as well. Thanks for watching again and y'all have a good one.